I think that's just my mentality, man. My mentality, like, hey, I try to tell the guys if it if it move, wiggle, anything, any life in it, smash it. You, know? <laughs> you don't want to give any life. It's just like a boy constrictor. You know, you think they like coming up for squeeze more, you know? That's just how I think, though. And like how I just always want to be a dominant guy. Guys, we are back here at Punchline Pod, man. We have a special, special, special guest today. But I'm on Humphrey. This is Jack Settlement, and we have Roquan Smith in the building today. <laughs> Roquan, talk to us. How are you feeling today? Feeling real good, man. You know, fresh off the bar. Fresh off the bar. Fresh Had a great time. Traveled a little bit. So just relaxing, ready to... Head down this last stretch. What you do over the bye? Any you want to give us any insight on what you did on the bye? Yeah, man. You know, unfortunately, I got to see my dogs, and you know, I know you know how that went. So I don't really want to talk too much about that. Jack, one. do we want to talk about it right now? Or wait a little. Uh, later, we don't once he finishes off. up, Analyst Hump is next. So finish your bye week <laughs> stuff. Yeah, and then got out to see my place in Chicago. So more so, just got to Shout see some out. old friends and stuff, and got to see some. Fam and whatnot, so it was good, good and relaxing. Shot town. What'd you get into on the bye week? You know, I had a pretty eventful bye week. Um, I wanted to go to that Georgia game. Um, you know, I said Georgia game because you know I thought you know Georgia was number one in the country, so yeah. it, it was good a team. Georgia, yeah. Georgia game. But you know, we're not going to get into too many details. I had a great weekend in New York. I had some uh, currently can't disclose things happened. Ooh, but it was a good one. It was a, it's a pretty darn good one. Uh, but uh, other than that, you know, I I got healthy. Ooh, I missed two games there. Didn't get out. I want to leave Baltimore until I got healthy. Something I never want to do again. I never want to go back to New York City during Christmas time to do Christmas stuff. Yeah. You know, I thought, you know, FAO shorts, you know, apparently it's a, you know, a toy store. You know, it's supposed to be a famous toy store or something like that. I, I didn't know. Maybe 100-person line. So then we're like, it just, you know, I don't like this. I don't like, it was a concert everywhere you went in this Christmas. You were also hanging around like Times Square, all the popular spots. I thought Times Square, well, I was in Times Square on like a, the, the, the Wednesday or maybe a Thursday. It, that wasn't that bad. But I'm just, Saturday in New York is not it. No. There it is. That's, that's the moral of the story. I did see the Rockettes. You ever seen the Rockettes? No, I haven't. But I think I'm, I don't agree with you with that. I, I would say more so probably just Christmas time because Saturdays in New York, for me, I've had some good times. <laughs> Bro, but yeah, the Christmas. Yeah, no, 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 no. New York is good. I'm saying during Christmas time in the Christmas popular areas oh, okay. is not it. Yeah. New York is a vibe. Like I had a vibe on Thursday. It was a vibe on Friday. And then Saturday, I was like, this ain't it. Yeah. This is not, this is not it. But- the Rockettes, man, I enjoyed that show. And uh, it was good. The little chicks throwing the legs up, the, the the soldiers doing the small stepping. They had some live camels. They had Santas, a lot of Santas. <laughs> it was good, man. It was good. So New York was cool. New York was a vibe. Ready to rest up and uh, so you're healed. the real world. You're healed if you were in New York. That's what people are saying. I am healed, man. I am healed. That's ready to, to rock. Ready to rock. I want to hear about what a Saturday in New York looked like for you in the past. Man, mm. so like. There we go. Yeah, some good times for sure. But I would probably say, so my uh, best friend from college played up there in New York and whatnot. So more so off season, we'll get up there, you know, have a nice little uh, lunch or whatever like that in the city. Probably, you know figure out a restaurant, whatever we're feeling, then have a big group dinner, you know, have some cocktails and things of that nature, which, you know, always can lead to a good time, depending on the time. <laughs> um, <laughs> then I would say probably just stepping out, seeing the city, you know, because New York, man, I feel like it just has so much to offer, like far as cultures, uh, food, people, some interesting people up there, man. I like to go up there to people watch, too. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think those things, but, you know, some things I won't disclose, but <laughs> it's always a good time. We're, we're going to need a non-disclosure for this episode, talking about <laughs> things that happen in New York. All right, let's hop into it. It's Analyst Humph time, an early edition 
Why is that? Because we have a special guest who attended. It's just, you know, Texas. We're, I think, are we in the rankings? I think, I think, I we, think we got in. Did you get guys, in? Guys, I, I, the, 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 the Crimson Tide got in. Oh, you got the in? The Crimson Tide got in. The Crimson Tide got in. Guys, guys, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't think Alabama was going to get in the playoff. I'm just going to be honest with you. I, I really did. Texas didn't deserve to be in there either. But, you know, things happen. FSU, it sucks to be them. It really does. I mean, but. But does it? I mean, uh, uh, were they going to get probably beat pretty bad? Yeah. Yeah, let's just be real. Uh, I mean, I mean. I think they were going to get stumped. Like, I think they were going to, I feel for them, but at the end of the day, I think it's the four best teams. And like, but I'm just surprised Georgia not in there because they, like, I was going to say, it's four four best. I feel like Georgia's in. Georgia would have been in over Alabama or Ohio State in over over Alabama. It wouldn't have been that out. That would have been fair. Like, I, I was just surprised Alabama jumped that jumped. Texas jumped too. From what? We jumped from seven, seven. to three, yeah. yeah. And Texas. then you dropped from one to six? Come on, man. It's crazy. Yeah. 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 It's crazy. Yeah, so that uh And you know you got the be, score prediction exactly be, right. I, hey. <laughs> I showed my girl that. I was like, I'm really him. I'm really <laughs> him. Like that actually if I would put I need to. I need to start betting, man. Shoot, that would have probably. I probably would have put me. I don't know what them odds be. You would have been. You would have been rich. But I definitely would not have put. That, that was. That was some random numbers. I mean, that was. Maybe it's not about the the analytics. Maybe it's just throwing the numbers out there. But nah, man. Bama. Jalen Milrose. I doubted him. He said, uh, "What did he say? His quote. His quote was something about." I think he just recycled a Jalen Hurts quote. <laughs> 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 well, anyway, I was one of the people that doubted him. I still don't think he's one of the Heisman. Like, I mean, no, he's like, not. No, nah. he, no, he got benched. And he that's what I said. Yeah, he can't. I, he no Heisman. I'm like, no, <laughs> yeah. no mistake about it. Like, he had a really good game, but he's no Heisman guy. Like, See, that's and that's all, all I like, said. I didn't say I hated him. I just said when you started talking Heisman, you were a little delusional. Yeah, no, he you little crazy. He's talking but crazy. that's my that's my guy now. That's that's really that's my guy, Jalen Monroe. Let's go, Todd, Michigan. The Washington. Reaction, the reaction of the Michigan yeah. guys when they seen that. I would have been a little. I don't think they tried to. They just thought it was going to be FSU, I think. Yeah. But that looked bad. They did look bad. They like, oh. Ooh, Unless ooh. you know. College football is getting real. What are, what are, we got Georgia, FSU. Who else? You got like Ohio State. Who's Ohio Liberty's State? Liberty's playing somebody. Missouri. Liberty's playing who? They're playing Oregon. Liberty's playing Oregon? Yeah. I could get that. That's could get, crazy. That could be a high score right there. And I think Knicks is going to play. Caleb opted out. McCord's transferring. So I feel McCord? like with the yeah, yeah the Ohio, Ohio State, State quarterback. Why does he transfer? And they say I think they're giving up on him. Yeah, yeah. Well, he wasn't like you know. Truth be told, like I watched a couple of their games. Like I think he's solid, but I don't think he's yeah. like anything that you would like write home I about other Ohio been. State quarterbacks from the past. Yeah, in my opinion. Did I see another top quarterback was transferring? Yeah, Cam Ward from Washington State. He's oh, Dylan Gabriel's going probably to Oregon from Oklahoma. Yeah, Maybe the portal. It. Would you guys have hit the portal if you're at school at any point? I don't think I would have hit the portal because like my first year, like I played special teams and everything like that. Uh, freshman season, uh, played in all the games on teams, and then got a couple of uh, grab bag time, you know, late in the games. <laughs> and then sophomore year, I started uh, ten of the thirteen games, so it's like. Why would why would I do that? Yeah. Like in junior year, you know that wrote itself out. So I probably would have been a a day portal guy. <laughs> I, uh, I had a little incident at Bama after my freshman year when I when I probably would have you know, well you know, portal it is, and then things got ironed out. Quickly. Yeah. So I probably would have been a day in the portal. Probably would have been. You a don't day think you would have left though? No. I make mean, things got ironed out. Like yeah. it got a little. Hey, it but do you think they get fun. ironed out nowadays with the portal? No. You know what I mean. I think like, it feels like you just jump in and then. I think like, nowadays kids see like red shirt or just playing special teams is like I'm not good at all, and they kind of just they jump ship. Kind of. I feel like some of the coaches might be pushing guys out too. Sometimes you know. No, I definitely think that's a thing. I know, like I'm sure coaches are putting pushing certain players out. Where it's like, okay. This guy here ain't what I what I thought he would yeah. be. So if he even mentioned the transfer portal, I'm gonna support it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> hey, I definitely think that goes on. Him. Like, yeah, I definitely think that goes. Yeah, on. I, it sounds like it, it's it's ruthless on both sides. I mean, some guys, it's crazy how you can start like a starter going asking a transfer 
and we were playing is like unheard of. But now it's like yeah. you can start that, be like, yo, you, you all right? We can find better. Hit that portal. Like Kyle McCord was one throw away from playing in the playoff, playing in the Big Ten championship, and then he's in the portal. It's kind of yeah. crazy. Yeah, it's, but when you look at his crazy. track record over the season, like I'm no Ohio State you know, fanatic and anything like that. But I did watch, like, you know, four games in primetime this year of them. And, like, I I'm not a fan. I, 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 yeah. Like, I, you know, I respect them because, you know, to be a starting quarterback uh, for a Power 5 school by Ohio State, like, you know, hats off to them. But, like, yeah, I don't see it. A guy who I really like, though, I like that guy, Cam. I watched him a couple times out at uh, Wazoo. Yeah. I think he's an underrated player. That's who he's Ohio small, State's going But, for. like, I like him. He's a baller. Yeah. Uh, you didn't really comment on Texas. So just to fill you in, in case you, top- in case you weren't aware, Marlon said after Texas beat Alabama that we were mid, that we weren't actually that good. Then he said if we go to the playoff, he's getting me tickets oh, because he thought that. that we were mid and then we got that. into the playoff. So y'all, y'all will go to the natty. We are. Because Washington is – that quarterback can do something, but yeah, that defense is, is pretty – it's Sweet. pretty weak sauce. I mean, y'all, y'all beat a really talented Oklahoma State team. Wow. <laughs> they were, they so what happened when they we beat? They, I'm just saying they could. When we beat Bama, but they could have ran the different table. team, right? Dude, dude, listen. Are we playing the you in the best championship? Four teams. I'll probably kick Washington out. Georgia, actually, Texas, Texas could be in. Texas could be in. I still kick Washington out, put Georgia in though. That's what I would have done. So Texas is actually still, I guess, is top four. Yes. Texas, Ohio State, how would that game be? Dust them. No. Nah. You think so? No. Nah. With no quarterback? He, yeah, he's a le- <laughs> Yeah, he's a le- <laughs> <laughs> What about uh Wait, uh, are you going to the Natty uh, or no? Twin Ewers. Yeah. We got bigger fish to fry, baby. We're gonna be daggum playoff somewhere, daggum beat. No, I'm somebody. talking about Alabama. No. Oh, you're not gonna be Michigan? We're gonna we're gonna be daggum playing somebody. And I don't know who's that. Who was that? What do we play on? That's on the first. The Mich- Dolphins are thirty first. We'll be playing Dolphins. Yeah. No, but that's the that's the semi. I'm saying if the Tide win, we'll still have another game. Like, cause yeah. we, I think yeah, we end we the season with Pittsburgh. The Natty's right? the day after Pittsburgh. Oh, it's it's always on a Monday. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I mean, we we shoot. We keep handling business. I will yeah. be there. <laughs> we can't handle business. Went out. Be number one seed. I'll be there then. Okay. Hop on my jet. <laughs> Where's the Natty at? Houston. Oh, that's interesting. That's, that's, that's an a, interesting place. Has it ever yeah, been there? I don't think so. I thought it rotates from California, New Orleans. Yeah, it's normally Miami. like the bowl games, right? Yeah. Like Sugar Bowl Houston? and Fiesta. It's interesting. Yeah, yeah that's, that's random. All right, I'll see you there then. Uh, our first fan question comes from Henry. Who's the hardest player in the league to tackle? Mm, that's a good question. That is a really guy. good question. The hardest guy in the league to tackle. Honestly, I'm a, I'll probably go Chubb, you know, but, like, I kind of know how to get him, too, though, because, like, going up against him all the time in college and whatnot, I would probably say him. But I would say years ago when I first came in the league, it was definitely, uh, what's that guy, Chris Carson before he had that really? neck injury. Man, it was my first, my first, first start. Back in 2018, Seattle came to uh, Chicago, and man, it, it was kind of like welcome to the league. Like I thought I can just go hit him, hit him down on the legs or something. Man, I kept kept running. It happened to me about two, three times that game. So I would say definitely him, but probably Chubb and whatnot. And Henry, if you don't get him before he gets going, Ooh. like if he if he gets going, then obviously he can be a uh, lot to handle. But if you can get him behind the line, like stop his feet, then he's not that tough. But like when he get a little head of steam, I would probably say him as well. Have you ever tackled any of those guys? Chubb. Hard thing about Chubb, he don't really acknowledge you. <laughs> like when they, so if you gotta think about it for me, like you're you're you you know, you're seeing more. I mean, you do be running sideways too, but for me, when Chubb running me, like you think like, okay, he might like juke, he might like try to run you over. He just like he runs so angle, he just doesn't even like acknowledge you. Like I missed a tackle on him one time because I thought he was gonna do something. He just ran like I wasn't even there. So he's he's hard. I remember my my first welcome to NFL was hitting uh, Le'Veon Bell. I hit him on the sideline. Boom, had a stinger. <laughs> Couldn't feel my arm. Mike Tomlin was talking crap. I was like, dang. And then a really shifty guy 
is Swift. Swift. He just, he got me in a hole. I mean, I it was one of them third and ones, fourth and ones. And he really just mixed me. And he didn't really have nothing but a door length of space. I don't really know. He, he got me. Yeah, man, a funny story with Swift. So, obviously, we played together in college. So, uh, I think it was a Thanksgiving game back in um, – a couple years back, he was playing in Detroit. I was in Chicago. And, man, it was like um, I tackled him. I hit him out of bounds. and then, Well, not out of bounds. I hit him. He was going He was going out of bounds or whatever like that. He, and unfortunately, ended up hurting himself. And, dope, bro, like he literally, like, was upset at me, thought I was, like, purposely out there trying to hurt him, bro. <laughs> like, if you see the Wait, hit. and when was this? This was whew, probably, like, 20, 2020, 2019. Dang. Like he, it was crazy, bro. He like purposely thought I was trying to hurt him. Like, and he's my eight, his agent is like one of my homies and whatnot. And like, uh, like, yeah, bro, it was crazy. And then like, I shot him a text and everything, bro, didn't text me back. No. <laughs> <laughs> it was How crazy. was it hit? Was it hit just? It was like when I came out of, when he was going down, I kind of like did like this here, like, like trying to more so let up. Like, it's my boy, like my boy, I'm gonna still, you know, hit you by any <laughs> means, but like, I'm like, try to let up or you don't want to put my weight on you. And then, like, he his, hurt his shoulder. And then, bro, he said, like, he, he thought I was out. He thought I was out to hurt him the way I hit him. It was crazy. I was like, dang. But, hey, that's what it is. But we, we've kind of, like, you know, came back to that. We just spoke a couple, th- like, you know. I was going to say, we play the Eagles. There's going to be smoke up there. That's <laughs> you. Is that a thing? I mean, you guys are at two schools where half the NFL went there. Like, when you're facing off with an ex-teammate, are you actually letting up? No, nah, I'm not, personally I'm not letting up. A funny story with Pickens uh, this year, like he came across the middle, was like, "Dang, bro, you trying to hit me like that?" <laughs> like uh, early and early in the Georgia season, boys. yeah. And I'm just like, I'm, I, I want him, I want him, you know, I'm gonna punish you by any means. I want to at least, you know, but obviously I'm a, uh, you know, not try to, you know, do anything to hurt it. I don't yeah. try to do anything to hurt anyone, but like. I'm definitely going to try to punish you and, you know, wish you all the best uh, after the game. You know? But I want to punish you during it. This is true. Where does that come from? I think that's just my mentality, man. My mentality, like, hey, I try to tell the guys if it if it move, wiggle, anything, any life in it, smash it. You, know? <laughs> you don't want to give any life. It's just like a boy constrictor, you know, like. You know, you think they like coming up for our squeeze more, you know, like you want to, you want, I want, that's, that's just how I think though. And like how I just always want to be an, a dominant guy. Whew. I, it, the best thing you can do for your sake playing with this guy, if you wrap somebody up, take them to the ground. Cause if not, he coming and he hitting you and him. <laughs> they just like, like that's, hey, that's, I told somebody this yesterday, you know, most, I would say 90, actually, I would say 99% of guys in the league, when they turn to run to the ball, like, it's not a hesitation, but you, like, you turning and at least seeing something. If you put a brick wall next to this dude, he'd run, <laughs> crash into it, because he just, so I'm like, it's, so it's, I'd be, be looking at that sometimes. I'd be like, man, I don't know if I can do it like that exactly, <laughs> yeah, but. Yeah, how do you get Marlon to tackle like that? What do you tell him? Man, no, Marlon's been doing it for a minute. You know, like Marlon is probably just, one of the most physical corners. It's just in the, the league. disregard for my body. I don't know if I can just he just be flat like just I I just it is just whew, it it's I commend you. I commend you. I, Appreciate I it. Clapping. So uh yeah, um no, nah, I, I had who was I who did I go against? Actually, I ain't gonna say who it was because we gotta play them this year. I ain't, I ain't trying to put no smoke in there. But there's definitely been a couple of times with some former teammates. That it's not necessarily like you take it easy on them, but it's like if you practice with somebody in college, like you kind of know that person a little yeah. bit, but you don't really know how they really play. So you'd be kind of surprised, like, dang, boy, okay, bet, bet, bet. And then it's just, it's, it's NFL. You can't really cop no, can't cop no please. Can't. At all. Now, some guys do be out there. I will say there is times, at like, for wide receivers, I have – See a pile coming, guys going down. I'll like pull a guy out of the way because you know I don't want nobody to get rolled up to, on. to get rolled up on. But when it comes to just like you got to make a tackle, it just it don't matter. You just got to just you got to handle that. Got to handle that. So you sat down with Ray. When was it? This summer? Yeah, I sat down with Ray this summer. How was that? Now it was pretty sweet. Got to hang out with him up up at the Pro Bowl too, man. And like you know, just seeing his mentality is crazy. Like when I you know talk to him, obviously the career he had and whatnot, but like. How, like, you know, like, just seeing things he would say and, like, how it aligns with my mental 
and whatnot. I'm be like, yeah, we cut from a very similar cloth, you know. But like, you know, Ray is Ray, and like it was, it's been pretty dope. Got a lot of knowledge from him, and like just the way he just want to impose his will on cats, you know. I'm like, I'm big into that, and that's like how I think. I wanna, I want, I want somebody to tap, you know. At the end of the day, if you had to give your Ray Lewis speech before the Super Bowl, what would it sound like? We'll get there. And then after we get there, I'll give you a recap. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like it. I like okay. It. I like it. Marlon claims that he's the leader of the defense. What do you think about that? I think he's one of the leaders on the defense. Yeah. I think he's uh, you one don't of see the me. I, I lead the huddle. I get the team hyped for the yeah. game. And they yeah. always put the camera on him, which I, is weird. Yeah, it's weird. I'll be, I be right there. Yeah. I'll be right there talking. You know, he like his two, two in a flare. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. Hey, every day, man. Every day, man. I come out there. That's my thing. That's my What's thing. What's your you know? thing? I don't know who I got that from. We started defense, uh, the defense huddle practice, the Ric Flair. Oh. Woo! I love that. That's I love him? That. I yeah, love that's that. all him. I love yeah. that. It's all me. You know what I mean? That's, that's you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a moderate speech guy. You know, I'm a moderate speech. But that's the thing. I'll be sometimes. I've tried to get you to do it, though. You have, yeah. But I, this is the thing. I've done the, like, if I get too hyped up, it, it just don't work. Yeah. <laughs> like, I can't just be out there like I'm about to just <laughs> kill him. I'm about to kill him. Cause then I be try to I actually did that to get try to get try to do that against Coop this year. I threw a hand, he juked me so bad. I was <laughs> it was it was bad, but it is it is fun. I see when I play nickel though, I could be like that. Cause yeah. you really be getting in the box and yeah. you just you really yeah. in. You like so, a backer sometimes. You like a backer sometimes. You like a backer sometimes. But it's uh it's a little different out there on the island, man. But that, but the nickel, you get to fill the gap, come some blitzes. Them linemen be coming though, man. I, yeah. Y'all be really having a whew. What I be seeing y'all boys doing be impressive, man. Because them linemen, they ain't they fast, man. Linemen are fast. Yeah. You don't really. That was a bit probably the first thing I noticed when I got in the league. Everybody is just fast. Like there's nobody that's really slow. They just and when them linemen come up on your second level, I'm just trying to just. I was hoping somebody else made a tackle because I ain't going to make the tackle. I ain't going to make the tackle. All right, I'm excited you're here because in the offseason, we do Marlon's tweets because you, you've you seen his Twitter before. Oh, yeah. He, pe people told active. me. I don't have Twitter, but people's told me about him. And I, I see him like, I see random stuff or be like uh, on social media, like Instagram or something. Yeah. I'll be one of his tweets or like one of my really good friends. You don't have Twitter. From college, uh, follows him and like used to just send me stuff. You don't have Twitter, well, huh? We don't have Marlon doesn't tweet during the season, but Patrick Queen, your running mate, does. Marlon he loves, loves he loves Twitter love, too. Yeah, now I know about I know about PQ on Twitter. <laughs> I know about PQ on Twitter. To not to have it, I know about PQ. Bro, he was <laughs> on one during the bye week. Here's here's his first uh, tweet. Apparently, Dua Lipa broke up with her boyfriend, and PQ oh, tweeted at Dua Lipa already got a sweetened jersey for you at a Ravens game. Who is exactly, who is Dua Lipa? She's an artist. Did Drake make a song about her? Uh, Jack Harlow, I think is, I think that's the song. Did Drake date her? No. What, she's an artist? Dua Lipa's an artist? Yeah, singer. Huh. Music. Travis Kelsey did inspired everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you I think PQ what? could pull that? Dua Lipa come to the, uh, Dua Lipa come to the Ravens. We got a yeah. great, great, PQ, PQ's a great guy. Great guy. No, really good guy. And, you know, you know. Yeah, I'm trying to think of good stuff about him. He's got a lot of good traits, man. He's yeah. a good could, football player. Could he actually pull off a sweep for uh Oh yeah, he can he can do that. Yeah, he can definitely do that. I mean, this guy bought out in 48. Did you have to pay money to change your number? Uh I did have to pay a little bit, but it wasn't as crazy because you know I was only here for uh mm. a half a, a half a season. So it was something like real cheap. It was like yeah. it was cheap. Well PQ did spend that much money on jerseys. I yeah, think he'll PQ said 150 K. Oh, mine wasn't even a third of that. Like, yeah. I think he'll definitely yeah. Spend some money on a sweep for Dua Lipa. You think so? No, oh, do a Dua, Dua Lipa. And he says he's- Dua Lipa might, you know, she's kind of, she's pretty famous though. Yeah. She probably don't need PQ. <laughs> <laughs> she don't need no PQ. What PQ gonna do for her? She's like, hey, little boy, I just want to see a game. Uh, yeah. If you want to take me out, talk to my publicist. Where you think he'll take her? <sighs> yeah, what is a PQ- Rusty Scrapper. Dua Lipa date <laughs> like Rusty <that>? Scrapper. <laughs> what is, I, my thing is- <clears throat> How did to access a super famous person? How do famous people date? I think I think honestly, like so, you know, everybody uses Instagram though. 
everybody do use Instagram, but I've also seen it to where it's like, and those stories to where it's somebody, assistant, publicist, or something like that, or reach out to the other per- people's people and be like, okay, so and so is would like to get to know so and so. So how would that go? And if you're not interested, obviously you won't hear anything back, or you may just hear, hey, I'm not interested or something like that. But I've heard stories like that multiple times. Unless you like, you know, somebody like OB, then you know, you can pop up, you can just send a DM. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty easy. Yeah, he could just yeah. I uh, I used to watch Netflix. No, Amazon Prime, and I used to be watching. I'd be like, you know, Amazon Prime does the thing where if you pause it, it shows the person's name. Yeah. I used to be like, man, she looks straight. Instagram, DM. Yeah, no, he did it. Yeah. I had I had one successful. <laughs> no. yeah. Yeah, bro, I used to literally do that. Like a couple years ago, I had I shot my shot at one. I mean, she was she wasn't A list or B list or C. Really, or D or E, but she that's was, like she Tinder was still, for famous people. It's was, like yeah. watching Netflix and then really what it is. Yeah. I've I've done I've done something similar like that before. Like when I was, uh, I think it was like USA, uh, like it was like the uh, Olympic soccer, all that type mm-hmm. stuff when they be doing the uh, cup and whatnot. And like so, I seen like uh, a chick from like one of those countries or whatever like that, but I got no response. <laughs> I, country. I was watching. Uh, I did. I, I did like something very similar too. We had the. Have you ever heard of the World Games? Mm-hmm. So they had it in Birmingham, where I'm from. One of the contests was hip hop. I forgot what this what country this chick was from. Anyway, I shot my shot. She. I didn't get a response either. But it was worth the shot, man. She was. She was dancing cool. It was cool. You know, it could have been more of a friendship than anything, honestly. But. She's worth me. All right, we're going to transition from that story to our Walter Payton nominee for the Ravens. Just got announced. Congratulations. What's that mean to you? Honestly, man, you know, it means it means a lot. You know, when you uh, when I think about it, like I was telling some of the guys, because uh, uh, I found out slightly uh, yesterday or whatever, uh, when I was telling some of the guys, man, like, you know, being a kid from um, – Small town Georgia, like a population a thousand, like no stoplights, no red lights, anything like that. Like a little family run grocery store. Population a thousand. And like, yeah, it's it's crazy. Um, and when I think back from that perspective, like knowing how much it meant, you know, for individuals or people to like to give back to the community where I was from, like in a very like rural area down in like southwest Georgia, and like just knowing what it means to the kids, because all we look forward to where I'm from, like you know, just the next day, you know, enjoying the day, playing, uh, playing with the kids outside, throw them up, bust them up, little football games, we used to call it, and just more so just enjoying family and takes a village to, uh, like, more so ra- raise a person. So, like, when I think think about it from, like, that perspective and, like, all the great people that's come from, like, such small towns and just being able to really just give back, man, I think it's, it's huge, and that's just something that I – always wanted to do and I told myself like you know and I've been doing this for a while Mm -hmm. and I told myself if like I'm only known as like a really good football player I sold myself short man because I like truly want to make an impact and it truly makes me happy to know like when I'm when I can put a smile on kids faces family faces who are going through a lot tougher times than you know I'm going through or others so you never know anyone's true story until you actually try to you know, see it and see it from their eyes and which is very hard. But that's something that, that's dear to my heart, man. And I just like really enjoy making people happy by any means necessary. And if it's anything that I can do to help families, kids, I'm all about it. That's awesome. How how does the process work? So you've got you're selected as the Ravens rep and then do they vote on who's the number one or wins the award? Yeah, I think uh, I'm honestly not 100 percent sure like how. It all works. I know there's 32 nominees and whatnot, and I'm grateful to uh, be one of them. And, like, at the end of the day, it's not why I do what I do. (laughs) Like, they can say that, I, you know, I can win it or I can just be a nominee. It's awesome. But I'm not, like, that. I won't stop what I'm doing because I don't win it or anything like that. So I'm not really sure how they'll end up picking, like, one guy. Got it. Yeah, it's awesome to, to be nominated. Let's go back to your time with Chicago and then now with the Ravens. You had a quote that you didn't want to throw your career down the drain. Was that actually what you meant or was that taken out of context? Yeah, that was taken out of context because <clears throat> I would never disrespect uh, anyone uh, by any means. Like, I'm, I'm not a disrespectful dude. Like, I'm more so 
least controversial guy. Like I'm not. I'm. Not, I just kind of stay out the stay out the way. You know, just be be myself in a sense. And that um that comment was taken out of context. I said, I'm happy to be somewhere where I don't feel like as my career would go down the drain from the standpoint of not knowing that Chicago is in a rebuild state. Yeah. Like obviously, every, that's that's known to the world. That's known to. Chicago fans, if they, you know, really, you know, are honest with themselves in a sense. And whereas like here, here in Baltimore, like I have a chance to compete for a title year in and year out, with a really good defense and a really good offense, you know, we're headed by like uh, Lamar over there. So it was more so saying that where I have a chance to truly compete for like a title. Cause knowing in Chicago, like the uh, competitive side of me, like when I was there, shoot, I'm thinking I got a chance to compete year in and year out. Like, that's just my mindset because I'm trying to knock everybody off um, in a sense. But then when you truly go somewhere where you actually have a legitimate shot, because honestly, man, there is only each and every year, there's probably like seven, eight teams that have a legitimate shot to make it to the Super Bowl. And like truth, that's just truth be, truth be told. And like knowing Chicago's in a rebuild state, wish them all the best. Don't have no no bad blood. I love a lot of the guys over that way. So uh, on the team and whatnot. So always wishing those guys uh, much success. And how, because of your mindset, like you said, you always thought you had a chance. When you were actually at Chicago, I mean, you played in a playoff game for them, but then towards the end, did you know that you realistically weren't competing for a championship? Or when you're there, you're like, you can't think about anything else. Yeah, man, if I'm being completely honest, like my mental, my mental approach, like I felt like I can compete. I felt like, man, we can get in, like, I'm like, Every second, like, you can start the season off three and four, something like that. Man, we can creep in as a seven seed or whatever mm. like that, and I can shock the world. I thought I thought <laughs> like that all the time because I, like, I, I said, I can lead this defense. I can lead these guys. All we need is, a, you know, the O can give us maybe 17, 20 or something like that, then we'll be good. That was just my approach all the time, and, like, I, I, I never wavered away from it, honestly. Yeah. And then now you're on the outside looking in, and you're like, ah, oh, they're in a rebuild. They never had a chance. Yeah, I, I I really realized I really realized when I watched that uh, because they they've had you know Chicago like the big market you're gonna have a lot of prime time games so I watched uh what game was that I watched that Carolina game and mm -hmm. then I really realized like I watched that game and then I watched the Minnesota one and then I was like yeah you know it's 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 le it's levels to it. Yeah. Even in games they won, to your yeah, point. Even in yeah. games they won, it's levels to it, though. It's levels to what it. What would you do with Fields if the Bears end up with, let's say, one and three in the draft? Are you sticking with Justin, or would you make a move? Honestly, man, it's a tough one. That 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 would be that would be a a, a tough decision for any any exec of anybody. But like, you got to look at it. I look at it from the standpoint of like Fields. He's a talented dude, and if like you know he can really he can really make things happen. And like truth be told, what is around him to actually showcase that? Because you can go get, uh, you can go get Patrick Mahomes. Like he'll he'll probably do better, obviously. Uh, but you know you got to put some weapons around. You got to put some weapons around somebody. You look at all the top teams around the league uh, on offensive side of the ball, man. They got weapons. They mm -hmm. got two threats, receivers, maybe a tight end threat, running back threat. Like you know, besides more, and I I know all the guys over there. Mooney, like, you probably couldn't name, like, uh, other receivers over there. You know, like, I know them personally because, like, you know, I've been yeah. there. But, like, it's crazy. And then when you think about it from the defensive side of the ball, like, you know, how good is the defense? Like, look at, like, say, for example, the Eagles, how good their defense was last year. It, even though Hurts had multiple weapons, when you look at it from my perspective, look at Sam Fran, like, Purdy, like, he got, like, three, four all-pro dudes <laughs> yeah. on offense. So when you look at it like that, you got to put people actually around somebody to truly get a picture because I think if he was like he if he was in a system where he actually had pieces around him, man, I think the dude can like light it up, like regardless, because he'll be a threat very similar to Lamar, in my, in my uh, in my opinion. I thought it was interesting when you told the story. What was it like the days leading up to to you getting traded? Honestly, man, so like it was it was it was it's pretty crazy because like I didn't think I was gonna get traded. Um, like obviously, I requested the trade back in uh, July. What was that? July, something right before training, training camp. camp yep. And then um, he was like, he was told me basically wasn't wasn't gonna trade me. But you know, things things happen. And uh, so I was thinking like I, the trade. I didn't even. I thought the trade deadline was uh, about like over. I thought it was over like Sunday or something. So I played the game Sunday. You know, get back on the bus. Uh, played out in Dallas, and then man, get back to the. Um, 
building everything like that. But I think the head coach was caught off guard. I think the position coach, uh, I think he was definitely caught off guard as well. But I should have peeps. I should have known something when we was doing like a walkthrough. Um, we was doing a walkthrough Monday because Mondays is normally you be on up there. Tuesdays oh, yeah, you're Tuesday. off. So Monday we doing a walkthrough after the game, going through the corrections. Then, uh, shoot, I done shift my focus to Miami, start looking at some film on Miami, uh, and whatnot, and then finish up the walkthrough. I go shower, and then after I go shower, I'm about to head to my body work lady. So I'm headed to her. And then I shower, I'm walking out of the locker room. I'm like one of the last ones to leave that day. And then uh, <laughs> I get a tap from a guy who was uh, a guy who uh, was like the GM assistant or whatever. I'm not sure his exact title. And then say, hey, um, Pose would like to see you up in his, uh, was like to see you up in his office. And then I'm like, mm, is it more so uh, contr- like contract talk? Because I thought we, we had like cut off all like contract talks anyway uh for the season, like, you know, focus, like, worry about it at the end of the year or whatever the case may be. When he tapped, I said, oh, like, uh, is it, like, urgent or whatever like that? And he was like, uh, yeah, uh, this here needs to be done in person. So <laughs> when I heard that, I'm like, oh, some, something's really up. And so, you didn't even know the trade deadline. You thought it had passed. Yeah, like because I, I wasn't really worried about it. Cause when he told me, like, okay, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna trade you. Yeah. We'll focus on like contracts, talks over it, we'll talk at the end of the season or whatever, like that. So I'm like, okay, cool. Like I'm just focused on leading the guys, you know, doing everything I can. And like you could ask the guys, never brought it up in the locker room, never said anything about it, because that was wasn't really my focus. My focus was just like being the best version of myself and like helping the guys lead the guys. And I, I said if I do that, everything else will like take care of itself. So then I get up there or whatever, and then, you know, it was like, you know, thankful for, like, how you did everything, how you treated the whole process. Eventually, it went on, like, what was crazy. The crazy part was that it went on for, like, four minutes before he actually told me where I was going. So I knew when he said this is the tough part of the business or whatever like that, I was like, crap. I was like, uh, something's going on. My heart, my stomach dropped, like, because truth be told, I didn't, like, initially, like, I didn't, like, when I asked for the trade, like, I didn't think that it was going to really, like, unless they really got some. And then after the season started, I didn't think I was going to get traded and whatnot. And then stomach dropped. So I'm in there like couldn't feel anything in my stomach for like about four minutes. And then he said, uh, eventually he said, because I'm up there in my head juggling, like, where am I going out west? Like east, back home to Georgia. What did, like, you, did you have a team that you thought you were going in at? Or were you just completely just like, I have no yeah, idea? Yeah, when I you're thought, thinking. I, th- I thought, I thought, um, like early in the year when I thought like I possibly could get traded, I thought it would have probably been somewhere like uh, Dallas, Seattle. I thought like Dallas, Seattle, somewhere like that, who kind of had needed an uh, inside linebacker need. And then it was one other team, maybe like the Giants, somewhere like that. I was thinking like one of those type teams, Giants or somewhere. But um, yeah, I would have I never thought Baltimore. I came, I, when I came on a visit here, like back in uh pre-draft visit, like it was it was cool and everything, but they drafted like really late uh by year and I knew I wasn't gonna make it uh that far. So but yeah, it's crazy how everything works out. But I never would have thought uh Baltimore. And then when he said Baltimore, I'm like, crap, what's in Baltimore? <laughs> like I'm like, what am I close by? Like and I was like, cause the only time I ever been was that one time for that visit. Dang. What was yeah, what was your reaction once you did you say anything it? back? Like what do, I don't even know what you say. It's crazy because like you don't expect that because you're a, like all pro player, done everything right. The GM telling you, and then just it's just, I know that was crazy. Like, did you say anything, like, back or like were you just? Nah, bro. It was, it was emotional. I don't know. It what was you're emotional. To say, but it was nah, it was definitely like, emotional, you. and like, um, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't say any, I didn't say anything about. It. I was just like, you know, all right, thank you. Shook his hand, and then you know, basically walked out. And then it was basically because you have to like when you get traded, you like have to sign some papers, some stuff like that. But like. Think about it. Two weeks before that, my homeboy Rob Quinn uh, got traded. Like, and he was like kind of caught off guard too. Like, whereas like he had got traded to Philly and whatnot. Like two weeks before that, so it was kind of. And then I found out about that literally through the media on the podium. I'm up on the podium <laughs> and found out about that. So like that was definitely emotional too because it was like an OG, you know, who I know's been through a lot, you know, and gave me a lot of game. Who I used to kick it with like on, on the daily. And whatnot. So when you just see see things like that, it just it shows you though, you know, it's a business and you gotta, you know, get yours while you can because they're gonna get theirs. Yeah, that's true. Did you have to clean out your locker? Oh no, I didn't, bro. Like when I when that happened, I didn't even go back to the locker room. I went into the training room because I care about the trainer so much and the equipment, equipment people. Then I went into my locker 
And that uh, there was a couple guys that was in there. I told them like they couldn't believe it. Like some of the guys that was in there, bro, they was like, "What are you talking about? You like of like what? They like you joking today? Like why are you why are you messing with us like that?" <laughs> joking. Is- and then the trainers like gave all them hugs and stuff. And then a couple guys in the uh, locker room dapped them up. And then the kitchen staff, I couldn't even see them because I'm so close with them. I felt so bad that I was like leaving them and everything like that. So I never really truly. Got to tell them bye, but I got a lot of guys who up there now and they like ask about me all the time. Like the kitchen staff be like, hey, how's Roquan doing? We miss him. So like, you know, little things like that. And I, I felt bad because like it was so emotional that I wasn't able to actually yeah. process it and like be able to like give them a great goodbye as opposed to like, hey guys, I'm leaving. Cause I didn't want to. And then you got to, mo- then you actually got to go to Baltimore soon too. You didn't really have time. Yeah. Yeah. Crap. Cause then crap, like bro, I'm walking out of the building, like uh, emotion in my car and everything like that. Then I'm getting a call from EDC, John Harbaugh didn't answer. <laughs> hey, I didn't answer because I'm just like, man, this is like, this is too much to process right now. So I'm like, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. So I just waited till I got home and then talked to him later, called my people and everything. Yeah. And then went from there. I mean, at least, I mean, looking back on it, at least you got traded from a, it sucks those guys that got to get traded to like a two and 10 team. It'd <laughs> yeah. be like, I don't even want to play no more. You yeah. know? So that's. So you nah, get traded crazy. on a Monday. Did mm-hmm. you play on Sunday? We had to, so luckily we had a Monday night game because EDC them tried to get me on a flight like literally that same day. So like I literally get the news at around like uh so it was basically two something um central time, Chicago Central Time, and then it was like three something. So I don't get home till like 4:30 or whatever like that. And then when I got home, like they was trying to get me on a flight that night. I'm like, man, I need a day. I need a day. I said I can do the first thing tomorrow morning. And it was like a flight like 6.30. So I, I popped up at like 4 something in the morning. And then I ended up uh, going like just saying, hey, this one, this one. Did Rashad so. send the jet for him? No, nah, he didn't send the jet for him. I hopped on that Southwest flight. Bro. <laughs> they love that Southwest, bro. They love that Southwest. <laughs> they did give me business select. You know, I fly Southwest anyway. Though, business like, select on Southwest. That, they love that, that just Southwest. means you board top 15. They love that Southwest. I, uh, I remember when I got the news that, I'm I'm confused. What? Why was I in the weight room when I heard that news? What day was that? You got traded. It was a Monday. It was a Monday. So you probably you know oh, Monday you probably get your workout in. Yeah. So I'm sitting in there in the weight room, and they like, we just traded for Roquan Smith. Uh, I don't know who phone. I'm like Roquan Smith. I'm like no linebacker. And then people just started hitting my line. No, that's really what happened. Some my homie is a big Chicago fan, and he hit me like you y'all just traded for my boy. I'm like, how am I supposed to know who your boy is that <laughs> yeah. literally doesn't know you? Like, yeah. you know, like, you know what I mean? that, you don't, that's not your boy. Yeah. So then I, I'm like, I'm like, dang, that's going to be nice. Because I think, I'm trying to think who our backers were at the time besides PQ. AJ Klein. <laughs> oh, Clean yeah, we, Klein. We was going through some guys at that point. Yeah. Uh, we was, we was. Bonds, Josh Bonds. We was in a, it was a funnel of guys. And then people was like, yeah, you're going to love, bro. You're going to love, bro. I'm like, for real? He cool guy? And then. He got in here. He, yeah, is he a cool guy? What do you think? He's a cool guy. Yeah. Cool guy. Hey, I will say this. At that at that point in time, we didn't I would say the it was weird. The leader of the team was probably like Chuck was calling the plays, Green Dot. We didn't really have like a true identity identity. Cause it was just, you know, I've been on teams before where like you don't have like a a guy that like is just a leader. But guys just do their jobs. Yeah. There's nothing. Those teams can can be good, but I feel like certain teams need that guy. You know what I mean? And I think, like, even some of those teams that when I look back at, like, Bama, my last year, we didn't really have, like, a true leader leader. And that team was, that was a really good team. But they just held, like, almost got beat up in a practice one time because I wasn't practicing good. So, like, <laughs> it was just like, you know, guys just usually did they expect you to do your job. But at that time, at that, time that team, we were kind of struggling on just, like, when, when, like our backs are against the wall, teams mm-hmm. are you know pushing up on us. We we needed somebody to be that, and we didn't. We didn't. We kind of struggled with that. So he came. He came in perfect time. He came in perfect. Time. There's a video that's going viral right now. Obviously, the Ravens defense has been amazing this year, but it said there's no superstars on the defense. What do you think about that? I'm cool with that. I'd rather say, people say no superstars and like just a, eleven mean cats that willing to snatch your face off. You know, <laughs> every single play, and like that's fine. Like don't take su- superstars. To be a really good defense, um, and I think, man, we just got a lot of guys that are hungry. And honestly, man, 
don't really care about who gets the credit. Like I can go out there and I've said it in multiple times this year. I can go out there and have two tackles, you know, and whatever the case may be, and we can have a dominant performance on defense, and I'm all okay because at the end of the day, I'm more concerned about winning, and that's all that truly matters. But gotta impose that will too when you get that chance. Yeah, I can I can see how you get people fired up. You yeah. really live that day to day. So you vote. You told us how. You, like the trade process, you both negotiated contracts with the Ravens successfully, I would say. Can you tell me about that process? Is it your agent? Are you, you know, giving your word on it? Are you completely separate? What's that like? Yeah, so uh, I have a team just like, you know, just like a GM uh, and whatnot. He has his team, salary cap expert, uh, you know, all these other analytical people and whatnot. So I feel like I, I have a good team as well. And it was more so Going to the table, I knew my worth uh, at the end of the day, and I knew like you know what I what I bring to the game. And so, to talk about the process though, uh, it was it was a really smooth process. Like um, with EDC and whatnot, once they traded for me, so we uh, met a couple times in person. Uh, me and him, like I would go upstairs, and he more so wanted to talk on the our off days. So it was like Mondays, and then a couple times we talked on Tuesdays because uh, it was a very very light day. And like so, when I got here. More so like a, a month went by. So just to let me get acclimated and just truly see how I fit in the defense before, you know, and see how I gel with the guys before you just make a make a decision, even though they did uh, give up a couple things to uh, get me and whatnot. And so when that process is going on, like, you know, I'm just more so focused on, hey, everything going to take care of itself. And I'm one, I'm big, I'm a big believer in that to where it's like, hey, I'm just control what I can control, just be myself and everything else will take care of itself. So I did that for like a month uh, or whatever. And then he ended up calling me up uh, to the office and like, you know, started discussing like, okay, the process and like how we was gonna go about things, what he viewed me as and stuff like that. So then when he would basically, uh, we would talk, you know, I'll have my notes and then certain things would be uh, over email and whatnot. And I then, you know, would get back with my team uh, at nighttime and then talk with them, discuss with them, say what I'm feeling uh, and whatnot and like, how I view the situation or what they what they sending me over and then I would, you know, they would send something, then, you know, I'm sending sending something back and then talking. So just a negotiation process, but it was a real smooth process. I got a lot of respect for EDC and like the respect he have uh for his players. And, you know, he's, you know, been doing things uh great for a while now. So happy just happy to be here, bro, and like happy that uh I'm with a team in Baltimore. I totally forgot. You negotiated your own contract, right? Mm-hmm. Wow. So it yeah. can be done. Yeah, it, I, it definitely can be done. And, you know, I think transparency is key. And, you know, I think that's the thing with a lot of guys. A lot of guys, you know, want transparency these days. And, like, you want to actually truly know how someone feel about you. Because, like, you know, if there's a agent, like, there's a lot of really good agents out there. And I have a lot of respect for a lot of agents out there. But, like, you know, there can be buddy-buddy things and things of, of that nature where it's like, okay, I get What's you this. Mean? Like, more of like, okay, say, they take hey. take care of that. Go yeah, on. take care of their guys, like, cause you know sometimes, man, a, a agent and GM can be under the same agency mm. in a sense. And like, when you think about it like that, and I'm not saying this is for all cases, yeah. uh, by any means, I'm not saying that. But like, there's definitely uh, cases where it's like you see some players get some contract, they get you be like, what? <laughs> and I, I don't, I don't knock anyone for getting their chicken like they bread. So get it by any means. But I just wanted to be have full transparency and know exactly how someone feel about me, how they view me. So. I actually know as opposed to hearing it through a second second or third party. You know what I mean? Got it. So like the clutch LeBron stuff that we hear in the NBA where <clears throat> his clients get taken care of better. That stuff's real. Where they have relationships with GMs. I don't really know how much how it works yeah. in the NBA. I don't, yeah, I'm not too familiar but with that industry. I just know NFL, it seems like, you know, like, how did that guy sign for so low? Or how did that guy, like, I feel like sometimes agents will some, and I don't think, it's it's not necessarily out of like ill will, uh, all like all time, but like sometimes they don't want to. They be getting nervous too. They be like, they be getting nervous. Like okay, like don't ask for too much. Like this, that. Yeah. Like oh, I'm not gonna put their information out there. But um, it's some stuff. It's yeah. some stuff. It, it's, it's definitely because it was like it was some situations. Yeah, even it's crazy. Like where some people hit me up and will be like, yeah, I can get you. I can get you this deal for that, and then I'm just like. I'm not I'm not selling for less like that. Like yeah. why? Like, but then they would get a nice look. They would get a nice piece because they're gonna get theirs regardless of like how long you uh play on the deal. They're gonna get their percentage or whatever the case may be. And then some agents just negotiate, you know, bad deals and 
not necessarily bad deals, just stuff that just kind of going to, it's not in the best interest for the player, I would say, sometimes. Um, yeah. Like, best, best fit. It's just, basically, there's a lot of stuff that can go wrong when you're dealing, I mean, anytime you're dealing with the middleman, it's it's essentially, yeah. things can go, can go wrong. Interesting. Um, but, doing it yourself is, is, is definitely hard. It's just, it's you, a lot, it's a lot to process. Yeah, now. You, got, like, you, got you got a lot be, of weight on your shoulders. It, so it's, and mo- most guys aren't, even myself, I had an agent, like, you still have an agent? Yeah. So yeah. I, I still have an agent and, uh, it just, it just depends on if you want to do it yourself um, or or kind of do it on your own. But there's definitely – a lot of guys can't sit there and handle, you know, they're, the team's trying to – the club's trying to get the lowest deal, too. Right, right. So they might be – I mean, yeah, Marlon, we, we think you're nice, but you ain't you ain't Jalen Ramsey. <laughs> like, yeah. just, I don't know what to tell you. Like, you, this guy does this. Is, you know, some guys aren't mature enough to sit there and hear that without, you know – because it makes it tough on the GM as well if you're not – because they don't want to – you know, they kind of want to – they don't want to – Bash and then they got to see you in the cafeteria the yeah. next day. <laughs> so it's like, do you think that's what happened with Lamar? I got I'm, no idea yeah. what happened with Lamar. I'm not sure, but also I when you the situation was yeah, because when uh, you when you think about it, when you think about it, like from uh, that perspective, like um, there's a lot of there's a lot of really good agents and whatnot, and not everybody there's not not everybody can afford to not have an agent by any means. Like some people like actually need one to like you know say if you sign in the middle of the pack deal. Because I've seen some deals like, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, like that guy David Malagetta. I, I can't pronounce mm-hmm. uh Malgetta, yeah. Yeah. Uh him, like some deals he's got for some people. And like I've been like, man, I don't like this guy may have not been worth that. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like in my my he, he opinion though, but like I I'd have seen him do things like where he's getting gotten people some crazy deals and yeah. whatnot. There's some superstar agents that a guy negotiating for himself would not be able to get yeah. the type of money that David Mugletta's, I mean, there's a lot of agents that have gotten some guys. You're like, dang, how did he get that? You're not getting that if you're, if you're a top of the line guy, if you're, you don't really need an agent because yeah. your value is your value. But when yeah. you're like, you know, I'm not saying anybody's bad, but you know, just middle of the pack, middle of the pack no guy. Like, and then you're like, dang, you got, you got top guy money. <laughs> like, that, that was, that was, it's just a little bit harder to sit down, talk shop when you're not um, you know, top five player at your position. Is there, we see the top level numbers reported. Is there anything in either your contracts that's like fun that you put in? Like Steve, send the jet every once in a while. <laughs> like you, you got to fly in the really Delta, does. not South. <laughs> I feel like the NBA has stuff like that. Yeah, I, I, but some players do have stuff like that. Like, cause I know players like to have like, okay, sweets in their contracts. Like, whereas like, I, would, okay, I do, I do PQ, wish I did that's that. How he I got do the, wish I did that. I know, I think, I don't know if Bradley Bill was buying the courtside seats, but I think, Beal had might have had that in his contract for court size seats, but I feel like that's that's that should be yeah. Should looking be back, what would you put in your contract? Actually, I don't even know if I would do this for you. I was a single man, like <laughs> yeah. you no. Know, so like, who, who gonna, my family don't be coming to all the games. Uh, there's nothing I could really think of. There's nothing I could really think of. Um, now, if I did it now, I'd be like, yeah, I need a suite. But then still, I only got. Like my family don't be coming on again. I don't have enough people that I'd be just to be an empty suite for the most part. Yeah, I felt like I, when I when I got my nice deal, that's when I said, okay, I can like you know I can I can afford to do that. So when my people do come up, like yeah, but I split it with uh, I split it with three other people with two other people, so it's not as bad as a hit. And then I was trying to more so help a buddy out too, whereas like so he's just not taking the whole bite by himself. Yeah. And then like you know my family do come up when it do gets cold. They can just be able to hang out, you know, enjoy drinks, food, whatever Mm -hmm. the case may be. Well, my when it's cold, my mom not even sitting in the stands. (laughs) She be in the family room. In the family room, on the watching it on that. I think the TV is pretty small. They might have changed it. I think the family room TV kind of small in there. Marlon, you got to ask our guest question now. The craziest money request. Oh yeah, man. So we got a we got a good little. We've had some good stories about money requests. You know, obviously, you know our contracts posted online. You know, hundred million dollars. You know, somebody see that. You know, they you know say they think you got the whole hundred. <laughs> think they get the thing they got it delivered in cash the day you signed it. <laughs> what is your craziest money request that someone's ever asked of you? Mine was just twenty k for Disney. So I'm gonna ask him for twenty k for to go to Disney Disney yeah. World. Man, I've got I've gotten some some interesting ones not directly through me. Like I've gotten ones like where. Like more so, people want to get this built up, like or something like that. Some, that yeah, that too. That's that, that too. this get built up, but like I've had a lot of random ones where it just be like, "Hey, 
I need uh, this here for like, bro, you should look into this investment. Like a dude who I'll like battle, you know, like one time it was like a guy who literally, it's like a promoter, like asked me like, you know, bro, I need this here for, uh, to get this business going. Like, I think we can do this. We can jump in on this together. I think it'll be a lot of like crazy th- things like that. And then where it's for, say, hey, you want how much? How much money was he asking for in that investment? Like 20, 20, 30, 20, 30 racks. Stuff like that. I've gotten people, like, I've gotten like stuff like that ran weirdly. Then I've gotten people to build things like, you know, hundreds of thousands saying like, oh, maybe you, we can do this. Like, but I just, I don't want to like put that info out there. So like, you know, it's pretty so crazy. Now, <laughs> sounds like you got to want to be investors trying to really. <laughs> a lot of that. Entrepreneur. A lot of entrepreneurs. I like that. Sure. I like that. It's funny. When we posted PQ and Marlon talking about this, the comment section was like, if the person comes with a business plan, will you actually listen to them? Well, I think what I, what I would do personally, like depending on who the person is and like what, like I'm going to gauge it first with my, from myself and then see, okay, let me see what this is all about and whatnot. Then if I think it's something of interest, like I'm going to send it over to my team who's like, you know, well experienced in uh that field and like, you know, see what they have to say. And then that's, but that's, that's if it's something that that's I'm dead. really into, gotta, like it's, it's got to be something really good. Like, where it's like, okay, this is like something that's been going on for a while and like maybe this would be an awesome investment opportunity, but if it's not anything like that, because at the end of the day, I look at it from the perspective like I've already hit the jackpot. You know what I mean? Like so, there's not really anything that like probably I could do that's gonna make me create like you know besides like some of the private stuff that I'm in like that's gonna make me crazy more rich yeah. or whatever the case may be. I'm more so worried about like you know just. Steady incremental, steady, like just yeah. steady going up, as opposed to like trying to catch another big fish. Because mm-hmm. I've caught my, I've caught my marliner, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, I, I think uh, usually when somebody sends me stuff, I just, I don't really, I usually will send it to somebody before I even like, and if they send it back, which they usually, I don't know if it's ever really from like a random like that. Yeah. It usually never gets sent back before. But I you get back. a lot of random stuff on Instagram too. You be getting that too, I'm sure, right? That crap be looking kind of good. No, you be like, <laughs> yeah, but they be lying. They be lying. They be lying. <laughs> but be then like- I get a lot of people that be like, they uh, because I, I like I like I haven't been in a while. I haven't been checking my requests and stuff like that. I kind of like just got away from it. But when I used to like check like requests and stuff like that, man, I used to see people like, oh, so and so sick. Uh, I need help with this. Uh. If you would be so kind, my baby is sick. And I be feeling bad because I'm like, you know, I'm a caring yeah. individual. But, like, I'm just like, man, this is that's, fin- that's how they get you. Finesse's will get Dude, you. Dude, one time I, uh, somebody DM'd me. This was this was probably three, four years ago. DM'd me like, you know, they needed some money for, for like, for. Someone you know? No. It's just random. I just, I decided to check uh, my, like, my, like, DMs, whatever. I think Instagram. They said they needed money for, for food. I was like, all right, where you live? Came, picked him and his sister up. We went to Ruth Chris. <laughs> the, the, the dude was, I, like, he couldn't believe it. He like, what? Well, this is crazy. And he was, like, trying to get his sister, like, to come outside because she was, whatever, getting ready or whatever. So me and him sitting down, chopping up. She went to the bathroom to, like, do her hair or whatever. Yeah. She was in the bathroom for, like, the entire day. He was kind of, like, you know, a little frustrated because he was like, bro, like she, and then she, she came back and was like, I didn't know they were, they had Jim Crow laws here. <laughs> was like, he was in Alabama? I was in Baltimore. Oh. I was in Baltimore. Yeah. They like kicked her out of the bathroom because she was like doing her hair in there yeah, on FaceTime. She, she was, yeah. she, she was kind of wild. The dude was like kind of embarrassed, but it ended up being like a whole, I, st- I stuck around the dude. I invited him over uh, to the crib one time. He was working at the the uh, the aquarium. Okay, cool guy. I and mean, he got kicked. He, he got fired from the aquarium because he was selling the tickets to <laughs> outside of the outside of the job. But he's he was, a hustler. He was, he was a, a hustler. He was a hustler. He was a hustler. Uh, he was a solid guy. But man, his sister was his sister was was, was she was wallet. Yeah, that's no. She, I don't think she that's was in like the, the face right dog. to say Jim Crow law. Like you in the bathroom she, for like an hour. Bro, she's in the bathroom just for doing at your least hair, an hour. Other people doing trying to go in there. Yeah, I think doing yeah. her hair. She she was she was he was very he was a good guy though. I, I forgot my guy's name, but <laughs> that was the one time when I think you know times might have. I don't know why I did that. I guess it was it was completely random. We was homies for a minute. Oh, I forgot his name though. 
But. Speaking of food, was he there when you got your spaghetti in Asia? No. So we, he actually, did we for, only me and Tyus went. He missed it. Well, really, we all really missed the bus when we were supposed to go oh, to the island. Oh, Fifi uh, Island. Fifth, yeah, yeah, whatever that was. But no, he was not on that one. But um, he did eat a scorpion over there. I have the video, too. Yeah. He did eat a scorpion. I have the video. That you have the video, trip. right? Yeah, that was a fun trip. Yeah. That the story I want to hear from your perspective is he said he just left. Did that, did that yeah, happen? Yeah, so it was it was very, left. very, very interesting, to say the least. <laughs> I literally left. So we on a uh, plane. Like I think we're going from... Um, Chiang Mai, uh, no, we, we was going from uh, Phuket. We was going from Phuket, uh, flying to Bangkok. Yep. So uh, we flying to Bangkok, and we just all we these three Americans on the back of the plane. Everybody else, like you know, not Americans in a sense. And like I think they was maybe uh, Thai national, like Thai people or whatever the case may be. And so, long story short, we on the back of the uh, the plane or whatever like that. Uh, we just hanging out, you know, chopping it up. It was a quick flight, and then we was just talking about what our plans were. And then next thing you know, Marlon say, "Yeah, man, uh, had my assistant uh, book uh, book book something like book a flight." And I'm like, "Okay, cool." Uh, I'm thinking it's like he was just like just a, to a different place after he leave Asia. He was like, and I was like, "Oh yeah, cool." And then he was like, uh, "Yeah." So I'm like, "What you what you want to do tonight?" He was like, "No, nah, I'm leaving tonight." <laughs> And I'm like, what? We was like, man, this dude is weird as shit. Like, <laughs> hey, like, I'm like, what is he doing? Like, we came over here and then he flew, at, flew his ass to Italy or whatever and didn't even have a good time. <laughs> yeah, it did suck. Italy did suck. Italy did actually suck. I went to some random freaking... You just left the boys. Yeah, oh, no, he just up and left. But he was like, he was the type, but it was funny because uh, even in the morning times, I didn't really care because, like, you know, we're all grown. But... um. Some mornings, like, he'll just go for a run or whatever the case may be. And then, like, Ty said, Ronnie will be like, bro, why is he leaving us? Like, <laughs> it used to be, like, stuff like that. I'm like, bro, it was he's Ronnie. Grown. It was Ronnie. I'm like, dude, I can't. Ronnie is a Ronnie's a big complainer. He's not a good, just go with the flow type guy. Yeah. I'm like, but I'm like, you know, I think I'm just going to go to, I think I'm just going to go to Italy. And so I was, I was literally sitting there like, yes, what we do? I'm like, yeah, I'm actually about to leave. And then they were like. You serious? I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, yeah, like literally when we land, I'm going this way. Y'all going <laughs> yeah. that way. They're like, it was wild though. Like, but like, he's one like, of the most spontaneous people. I've, yeah, but probably it, the most spontaneous yeah, person I've yeah, ever met. Yeah, it definitely was not a planned thing. It definitely was like a, yo, I, I think I told her just book me somewhere in Italy and it booked me a horrible place in Italy. I ain't gonna cap that. that What's the Roquan story think. from the trip? Roquan story from the trip. The trip was fire because Roquan is very similar to me as far as we'll try. Wh- whatever, eat whatever. Like Kasoy was probably the best thing I had. Do you remember that Kasoy? I was fired. That was legit. That had my stomach cooking though. It was spicy. And I tried it again in America and it wasn't the same. Now, I don't think I'll ever have anything as good as that. Yeah. That was, that was, when we went back twice. We went back the next day. Yeah, we went back the next day. Then we Ronnie was like, bro, why you keep leaving? Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. went back the next day. Uh, nah, I mean, I just loved eating so many different foods, trying so many different stuff. Just like, I mean, we went and you got that. You know you ate centipedes, too. Yeah, we went. Centipedes. We like, went those, got little, those little, little uh, small, I have a picture of it. Like, I think it was looked just like a centipede. It was like a chipotle <laughs> of just, I didn't, we didn't random know much. Random bugs, insects. Random it was bugs, weird. We like, like, like give, us the, give us the best up, and she just, boom, boom. I'm There's like, no way Ronnie ate any of that. No, no, no. no. All, the, just all the fun, yeah, all the, yeah. that's what I'm saying. All the, like, the funnest stuff and stuff was mainly just because we were just trying, like, I'm not asking, looking at the menu. I mean, I don't think they had a menu, really. They just was. Yeah. A whole bunch of pots. They didn't have a menu. Like, yeah, we just had a rice like, hat on. I had a rice hat on, just walked up. It's like, because they be on like little courts and carts, and then you literally go there and you sit down at a chair. I kid you not, like smaller than that. Like, you yeah, literally be knee, like, yeah. and you got it. Your knees Ronnie be looked like. so funny. Every Because t- the, the seats be like, it It kind of be seeming like for kids. Yeah. Almost like, it's so a Ronnie knees all yeah. up in his chest and the plate, the table down below his knees. I think the coolest thing, though, was probably when we was like out in uh Ming Bing, I think uh I, I think that was Ming Bing. Uh like <laughs> it was very similar to like how, <laughs> how Ming Bing, was that not it? Like when we went up there floating down the uh when we was in those little uh Oh that kayaks. that was that was cool. When Man. we had to get run the tip that lady. Them lady <laughs> Roddy them <laughs> That was wild. That was wild. Oh, lady no. literally makes two hundred dollars a month and feeding a family of three or four. 
And so I tipped like what a hundred dollars. I we think. Had a, yeah, we all tipped a lot, but Ronnie was. Yeah. Ronnie was not. So we had a. Uh, it was like a a little canoe. Like a canoe, but yeah. like she, we that was had to be what two hour long. At least, at and least. all four of you were in all that four boat, of us, and she was no. We was all two. on set. Who's on set? Me and Ronnie was in the same one. Yeah, me and, and Ronnie was, was in the same. She one. rode us the entire way. Damn. So her her back is like I mean she she got to work out there. She's gonna try out. She got to work out there. Crazy. And so we bro. like we like. I was like, how much you get paid? She she ends up like telling us through somehow that it's basically like two hundred dollars like a month. We like dang like we should we should give her like a a nice tip. We give her a nice tip. Ronnie's like, what are y'all doing? Why are y'all tipping? Dude, she needs five dollars. We're like, bro, yeah, two or some money. Yeah, he was he was tripping on that. I'm like, bro, you tripping? Like, yeah, you tripping? Like, he was actually about to like take the tip back. Like, that's yeah, it. he no, about to yeah. take. Our, like, we put it. He's like, whoa, you, you put too much. We're like, bro. Yeah, he was tripping. So, I thought the craziest thing was the traffic. And was that Vietnam? How you walk through traffic like that? Oh yeah, in ha- ha- Hanoi. Hanoi. Uh, Hanoi. Like yeah, literally, bro. It's like. They don't, you, it's no like, it wasn't like no crossings or whatever like that. You literally just like walk through and the mopeds and cars just dodge, dodge you. you. It's so crazy. They, they you just got to like keep going. If you, when you walk through traffic, you just. You're like a running back. You look, no, yeah. you literally just look straight across <laughs> and the cars will dodge you. You don't But you dodge can't be car. stopping because yeah, you make it you hit. Ronnie hit. do it. I don't remember Ronnie being with us right there. <laughs> You're like, I'm going to meet up with you. I, I think, because you had to go, that was when you went, if you went right, you didn't have to pass all them cars. Like right. That. Man. Running would like sometimes he would sometimes just come and meet us after or something like that because running like to sleep too, so you know running gonna get his Z's in. You know, <laughs> I thought man that was it was a good trip. So where we went Hanoi, Chiang Mai, Chiang Mai, Bangkok, Phuket. Phuket. Then we was in uh, Tokyo too. You didn't do Tokyo? Tokyo. No, I oh, didn't do, in Tokyo. I didn't do Bangkok. Tokyo was I wish we would have stayed long in Tokyo. Yeah, that sushi was so good. It was it was legit. Oh, especially that little. Miro, Miro, however, it was like the guy that made the Netflix documentary Miro Sushi. It's something like that who's like really famous. So it's the restaurant that he actually goes to and where he like recommends right. and everything For like real? that. So yeah, it was, bro, I'm it was about a to pretty, watch that Netflix thing then. Yeah, it was, it was pretty crazy uh, to say the least. That place, it was a very exclusive place that we went to. Yeah, I don't know how we got it. How, how were we able to get in? Well, you know, the hotel concierge. Uh, service. That's who like, cause that's how you book reservations over there. Mm-hmm. You can't like just call and say, "Hey, I want this here." And then the funniest thing though, bro, Ronnie want to eat pizza in Japan. You remember that? <laughs> he did. Did wanna you eat. end up coming? No, I didn't. It was like I'm the, I did pizza, because bro. I was like, I'm just like, I don't want to leave him bro, by it's himself. Really good pizza, bro. It's a Michelin star restaurant pizza in Japan. How was it? Like, it was. It was good. It was really good, but it wasn't like. I don't think it was something that I haven't had before. But it was, was it better it was, than uh, you're Deep Chicago. Dish. Yeah. Oh, it's better than Deep Dish, yeah. yeah. I don't, I'm not a Deep Dish fan, though. Okay. I think that's maybe like a once a month, Ooh, once might, a couple times a year, maybe. It's you, might get, you might get yeah. some hate, bro. Talking about Chicago, Deep Dish. What about crabs? You, have you had crabs since you got to Maryland? I have. So the first time cracking crabs were uh, earlier this year at a Ravens event or whatever like that, because I never, never did it before. And Craig, our security... That's who uh, helped me out with that. So like it was, it was pretty cool, but it's too much work them. for same, little me. Same, too much work. You used the, event. I could see you just just no. Nah, I'm not trying yourself. to like. I may be one. Can of you me. just do that? No, nah, man. I'll get strength, I'll man. get like cutting on my hand. I'm not like <laughs> people think I'm crazy. Like the way I be playing, but like I'm not like that. Like I, I'm not trying to have cuts all across my hands and stuff like that. Yeah. You said security. Did you see uh, Big Dom? Did you see that? This that weekend? was funny. Yeah, Big Dom. Uh, it's a big dude. I don't know him. He is a big dude. It like, uh, but I thought he was more so trying to separate the uh, separate the guy or whatever like that. That's how I seen it. And then I don't think Greenlaw actually tried to put his hands on his face or whatever. That was by mistake. He was just trying to point at him, yeah. I think, and let him know like, don't touch me or something, or don't f with me or whatever the case may be. Because when you look at it, I don't think he actually tried. Because he he did like this here, and I don't think he meant to try to like actually mush him in the face. And I don't think Big Dom had any ill intent. This is my opinion. I think he was just more so trying to separate the guys and not not create anything. Because like, why would a head security guy try to get into it with a player on national TV? Yeah. You know, that wouldn't be smart. With a helmet on. With a helmet have on. A like, helmet yeah. On. Wouldn't yeah. be smart. Who are your top five linebackers in the NFL right now? Top five linebackers in the NFL, not including myself. Not including yourself. Not including myself. Including yourself. Not including yourself. Not including myself because I'm in there. Uh, <laughs> top two, not two. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing that so, yeah. It's hard to preserve. Yeah. So now I'm gonna go this season. I'm gonna go Warner, 
Man, I haven't seen many games, but I had I had always really liked it, uh, Levante David. And, like, I haven't got to see B. Wags much uh, this year either. But, like, obviously Wags. Um, then you got um, – Man, I'm trying to go. I like you know who a sleepy guy. I don't really know if I have a top five because I would truly have to think about it each and every. Uh, you gotta guy. watch more. You don't. It, now I think about it, like in order to assess linebacker, you have to watch like game film. You have to and watch not like it. corner or, like stuff where they show the. It's weird. It, yeah, you, you really definitely have to do that. that. Uh, underrated guy who I, I like Foyer down in mm. Jacksonville. I think he's very uh, underrated. Um, but man, like top five this year. Uh, like Demario's been playing good ball for a long time, but I haven't gotten to see him this year, so I haven't haven't truly uh, gotten to see it. I thought Matt Milano was balling before he got hurt. Obviously, Patrick <laughs> Queen, who's uh, obviously Patrick Queen. I, I was trying to go through the list and whatnot because uh, I think I for sure think the way PQ's I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably leave it at that. The way I, PQ's been playing this year, he's definitely a top five inside linebacker in this league. I'm willing to like I'm willing to bet that. Was like one of my game checks. <laughs> like, would you rep him in free agency? Would I rep him? In free? I'm sure. He, I'm sure he has a great agent and everything like that. You know, I don't want to break business in between friendship. You know what I mean? So, but PQ is definitely uh, a top five back. I'm trying to, yeah, I'm trying to think of think of some guys. I just can't really because it's like I have to go through each and every um, each and every conference, and I can't really come up with uh, too many right now. Yeah, you got to really watch. You got to really watch. What, what makes, there. like, corners, right? You got interceptions, pass deflections, no targets allowed. What makes a good linebacker? I think what makes a good linebacker is a guy that, like, you know, that can hit first and foremost, that don't really uh, miss a lot of tackles, um, being able to get everybody uh, on one page. Um, I think being, being physical – then being being able to cover, and then being able to just like block block uh block protection, getting off of blocks, uh, and then just hitting, and then just really, you know, setting the tone. I think like all of those things combined, like you know, makes a a really good linebacker. In two months, when the Ravens win the Super Bowl, I want you to leave a message for Ravens fans so they can look back on this. What's that gonna look like? What that will look like, man. We stuck through it. We did it, and we here now. Champagnes, here we come. <laughs> yeah, are you talking, going out in hey, Vegas after? We ain't talking Champagne, Illinois. <laughs> 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 hey, we going up though. Like when we get there, we got we got we got to take care of business before then though. It's a it's a long process, so like when you get there, it's it's, it's gonna be worth it though, man. I'm, I'm I'm just excited about the journey though. Like I'm more so in for the journey and like just ready to like just each and every week just enjoying it. Let's ride, baby. Roquan Smith, appreciate you stopping by. Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. You know what to do. We'll be back next week with Odell Beckham. What question should we ask Odell from you? Maybe what was life like? This would be a good question for Odell. What was life like prior to him making that crazy catch uh, was that his rookie year? York. Yeah. I think that was his rookie year because he was So he's kind of already had that from rookie year. But on. that was late in his rookie year. That's when he really blew up. Yeah. Like late in his late in his rookie year. Bro, I never thought about how much that blew him up because it was a Giants. Cowboys. Versus the Cowboys. Yeah. Sunday night. Sunday night. The whole. Everybody's watching that around the world. Everybody's watching that around the world. Yeah. It's crazy. I think, man, it's. There's gonna be a lot of good questions for OBJ. Like, you know, yeah, I think there'll be a lot of good Oh, questions. I do have one last question. We've been pushing Marlon to get a pick six. I'm sure you would love to see that too. Goodness gracious. What's the do you guys practice? I gotta play first, freak. Do you guys practice celebration? I see all these teams practice. I, I try to get Gino to practice back when he was on his crazy pick streak and he didn't want to do it. And then he got a pick that Sunday. Yeah. And then it, I, What would your dance be? First pick six. I'd just be hype. I never <laughs> Yeah, I'm, see, it's different when you get a you get a you get a uh, a group of just guys that just you know want to work. You know, like you know maybe we'll take a picture for the memories, but we not in all to like the uh, everybody shaking your excited. ass doing all this crazy <laughs> stuff, like all that. We more so you know get it. Then we're gonna go get some rest, and then we're gonna come back out there and hit you in the mouth again. <laughs> that's that's about how a pick I think. six. You got yeah. to go, 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 go back out there. You got to go back out there though. 
But I'll then, bro, like, sometimes we be getting interception. how they run on the opposite field just to get a picture. I'd be like, but them legs self- tired. I'd be like, y'all got it. Yeah, hey, ooh, I throw, I throw a hand up like this. Yeah, y'all got it. Yeah, Gino gonna take off every time. B. Steve, the best thing about B. Steve, he don't want to get up. He get a pick. He be trying to make sure, you know, nobody yeah. gonna strip him. He think he's a running back still. He think he's a running back, be a holding ball. Oh, he said you're the only player on the defense that would pitch the ball on an interception. I would, I would do that. See, you think there's others? He, 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 a, he a selfless guy. Uh, he said Kyle would try I said, to score. Kyle, oh, Kyle gonna try to score. Gino <laughs> definitely gonna try to score, said, even though he gonna run out of bounds. Like uh, I said, Marcus would be the last person to ever pitch it. Oh yeah, Marcus is definitely not pitching it. Um, PQ definitely. He gonna go PQ, back to his running no, back he gonna days. he think he, he gonna think he is a running back in Livonia, uh, Louisiana. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I can't think. Oh, maybe one. Of, no, I could I could see Clowney. No, no, definitely not. I could actually see Kyle Van Noy. I can I can see KV I can see KV pitching if he's like if he don't think he can make it <laughs> like that's a big if <laughs> big if but KV's got a lot of touchdowns on defense in his career big mo- oh, I can see Brody doing it too nah Brody gonna take it try to take it to the house Matt, BK? Actually, some of them D line that put a hand in that them, them nah BK gonna show you his speed <laughs> yeah, BK BK gonna think he he gonna try to run you over he gonna try to run I'll be over. interested to see uh, I gotta really think about uh, like last year I was more into it. Uh, I got to figure out some travel plans too, man. Like I'm thinking about uh, Patagonia, that region down there, like in Pat- South- freaking Gonia. down in South America. That's like a real place. I just know the brand. Yeah, don't even know about the real. So it's like down there by Chile, yeah. Chile, uh, like Adventure. Argentina, all of that. I, I got to get down there, Machu Picchu in Peru. Yeah. I want to see that too. So yeah. All right. Well, go finish business. Take a vacation. Appreciate no you. Appreciate y'all.